Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and I would like to invite you to our Bible study today <clears throat> on Revelation chapter 6. Of course, if you're reading the Bible through us, uh, through with us, you should like to be at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 6 and Daniel chapter 6 today. But let's go right away with the chapter 6 of Revelation. In the background, you can see that we have the horses, the four horses of the apocalypse. And we'll be talking about that as we go. So let's get started here. Now it says, I watched when the Lamb opened one of the seven seals. And I heard one of the four living creatures say with a voice like thunder, Come! And I looked, and behold, a white horse, and its rider had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. Now, Sometimes it's important, uh, I think most of the times, to mention what is not mentioned. So let's look at this horse up close, because this is going to reveal something that we need to know about the four horses of the apocalypse. And I think it's very interesting that the Lord gives us this uh, explains things in such a way that he does. And I'm going to turn the lights on here so you can see just a little bit better. There we go. And here is the first seal. Uh, the first seal is a man on a horse. A king, because he has a crown. He's on a white horse. He has a bow. But, where are the arrows? Okay. And so that, that leaves a question, doesn't it? Why are there no arrows? I mean, obviously, if you have a bow, you're going to need some arrows. Well, this man actually is the Antichrist. He, he is not the Christ. He is the Antichrist. And so we need to realize that. There he is. He's on his white horse. Now, you say, well, how do you know those things? And uh, the reason we know that is because he is, he's not the Christ. The Christ, when Jesus comes back, he's going to have multiple crowns. Okay. But... This man has one crown. And uh, I know a lot of Christians, they're deceived into thinking that this is, or they misunderstand, I should say, because I don't think they're deceived, but they, they misunderstand and think that this guy on the white horse is Jesus, because he's on a white horse. And doesn't Jesus come back on a white horse? Uh, yes, that is later on. And by the way, Jesus came the first time on a, a donkey, okay? Uh, very humbly. But this time when he comes again, he will come as King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. But this is not Jesus. This is the Antichrist. He comes pretending to be, I believe, Jesus. See, he's not going to say, a lot of people say, well, we call him the Antichrist because that's what the scripture says. But he's not going to be coming and saying, I'm the Antichrist. No, he's going to come as the Messiah of the Jews and of the world. And so he is going to be very charismatic. He's going to be uh, such that... <clears throat> Uh, he will seem very pleasant and a wonderful guy and no doubt handsome and so on. Uh, a good politician. He's going to bring peace. The world wants peace, peace. And so that's what uh, they're looking for. 
And that's what he's going to pretend to bring. But behind the scenes, there's other things going on. Now, as you look at it, uh, it's reverse order uh, when you look at it behind me. Uh, but when we show it to you, uh, the hor four horses of pop Apocalypse will be in correct order. So uh, there are no arrows because he's going to use diplomacy. He's going to say to Israel, oh, we will make a covenant with you where nobody will fight against you for seven years. And uh, people of the world, oh, we will uh, take away all fighting and all wars and you will be in peace, peace, peace. Bible says, and there is no peace. Okay, so that's the for the first writer. The Antichrist appears on the scene. That is the first seal, as it's um, uh, it's opened up. Now, I have to say something about uh, seals because, and about the trumpets and all the things that happen in the uh, Revelation. Uh, some people say, well, they're not in chronological order. They are in chronological order, but what happens is, just like uh, maybe a football game and you're watching on television or something, they will go back for a rerun to show the different points of view, okay? And so that's what we'll see as we go along. It's in chronological order, and we'll see that, but they go back and look at different parts of it in more detail. Okay, so this is the first thing, the first horse that appears on the scene. Now, um, is it gonna be literally him coming on a horse? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, and I do take the word of God literally and the revelation literally, but when there is an allegory or uh, some of the depictions of things like here, you're gonna see the depictions of these horses is of things that are happening, all right? And so they're revealed as, uh, to sum it up quickly, is the man on the white horse. So what's he gonna be like? He's gonna be very deceptive. He is going to be very well liked. He's going to be very handsome, no doubt, but he's actually the man of sin because he is a person who is possessed by the devil, all right? And so, so the first seal is of these different four living creatures say with a voice like a trumpet, come. So the four living creatures that we looked at before, the ones that have uh, different heads and so on. Uh, and I looked and behold a white horse and its rider had a bow and a crown, doesn't say arrows, was given to him and he came out conquering and to conquer. So he conquers through diplomacy, not fighting. However, as things go along, and this is the first of the seven years of tribulation, you can go to Revelation or Daniel chapter 9, and you can see these things unfolding as well. When he opened the second seal, remember nobody could open the seal except for Jesus, and this book is all about Jesus. It's not about us. <laughs> it's about him. It's all about Jesus. I heard the second living creature say, come. And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth so that people should slay one another. And he was given a great sword. Okay. Now, even though the Antichrist comes, and uh, supposedly in peace and peace and says peace, peace, but there is no peace. But to begin with, uh, people accept him because they feel like he's going to bring the world peace. Um, that's what it, uh, people talk about. Esther, how are you, sister? 
A happy Sunday to you. All right, so the second seal, the second horse, the second horse of the apocalypse. So we looked at the first one. No arrows there, so he's he pretending like he's peaceful and gets uh, makes agreement with Israel for seven years. There will be no war uh, against you and so on. But now, after a short time, this man who is possessed uh, by Satan, after a short time, then he <clears throat> the his real colors start to come out. And that is this red horse that the Lord talks about is to picture warfare and blood. And that happens on the earth. Look at the sword now. Uh, he has a sword and it has blood on it. So the first one, uh, arrows, no arrows, just diplomacy, just a bow. And he conquers through diplomacy, deception, and everyone wants, it seems like, world peace. And if they have the beauty pageants and so on, they ask the ladies, they, oh, we want world peace. Okay, well, now he comes into power, but look at what happens next. Then people start fighting all over the world. He is organizing 10, uh, dividing the world into 10 different parts. And so there there's fighting that goes on and uh it's interesting that when you have um satan and his minions the demons uh they actually uh fight against each other sometimes and you're going to see that uh they also just like people uh when uh satan uh is he's the ruler of this world right now. Isn't there a lot of fighting that goes on? Yes. And of course, he uh, uh, he doesn't care. Uh, people want to fight and kill each other. Uh, that's fine as long as he thinks he's winning overall. And so he likes to see people killed. Uh, Satan doesn't really like people. He pretends like he does, but he really hates them because God created them in his image. And so that's a way he thinks he can get back at God is by killing people. In fact, the evolutionist likes it. Uh, I wanna talk to you personally here. So the evolutionist likes it when people are killed. Uh, they feel like there's too many people on the world. They want to, we're right at 8 billion people in the world right now. And they want to cut that back to uh, very few in numbers because, of course, the, Satan is using this ploy of, uh, uh, well, the Green New Deal and so on and things are, there's too many people in the world and we're causing the problems. Uh, basically, it's the people. And if we want this to be a nice world with nice plants and uh, uh, some nice animals, not too many animals though too, because they say the cows are also uh, destroying the ozone and so on. Well, you know, this is these are lies from Satan. The changes that we see in climate and so on is done by God. Very little is done by man. And uh, the thing that is happening, people don't want to admit that God is in charge of the climate. And so here, uh, the man of sin, he has many names, uh, the beast and so on. Uh, we call him from the Bible because we know who he is, uh, Satan incarnate. And he is making sure now that a lot of people are getting killed on the earth and it just tickles him pink <laughs> kind of a uh, way of speaking tickles him pink that many people are being killed he loves that all right because he hates people he pretends like he likes them but he loves to kill them so it's a, a rider on the red horse and was permitted to take peace from the earth 
So it starts with peace, the seven years do, but and then the wars start so that people should slay one another. And he was given a great sword. Now, when he opened the third seal, Jesus did, I heard the third living creature say, Come! And I looked, and behold, a black horse, and its rider had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. All right, let's look at that and see what that's about. Okay. The third horse is a black horse. And on it is a man. And again, uh, these are uh, not literal uh, people and horses actually here. They represent what is taking place on the earth. And, uh, and we will interpret Revelation literally, the places we can interpret it literally. But obviously here, this is picturing the, what is going to start taking place is there's plagues and famines and pestilence. All these are talking about uh, diseases and sickness and uh, like there was COVID and so on. There are going to be a lot more of those types of things. However, there's also going to be inflation uh, for the average person, not for the rich, but for the average person. And so there's going to be a lot of starvation, uh, that which we see starting already. And all of these things are building up uh, as time goes along. But here, you notice that he has, um, there's several things in his scale there. Well, there's it's supposed to be bread on the left-hand side that you can see from here, this direction. And then on the other side is the gold because it's going to take a lot of money. Uh, this is what it's saying. It's going to take a lot of money to buy even bread, the basics. Oh, but for those people who are rich, uh, there will always be the rich and the poor. In this case, you have the rich, and in the bag there, you see has wine and oil. And that, in other words, that is the rich element uh, for those who are rich still. There will always be a few rich that rule the world and uh, the, a lot of poor people. The poor people are starving while the rest of the world uh, leaders and so on in communism and in uh, Nazism and all these isms, there are those few that rule and they have um, in secret, they have, have all they want and more. And so that's what the black horse is about. We need to move along quickly because of our time. But we also see <coughs> another horse here. And which horse is that? Okay, this is the fourth ho horse. And so I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius, it's gonna cost a lot for uh, wheat and to keep uh, making food that you can eat and three quarts uh, of barley for a denarius. <coughs> <coughs> and that's very expensive. <coughs> and do not harm the oil and the wine for the rich people there. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, come. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and its rider's name was death and Hades followed. Mm, interesting. So a pale horse. Dapple horse is present in some versions. 
and our agreeing on him was given authority over a fourth of the earth. Now, uh, as we go along, there'll be different percents, different fractions. This is a fourth of the earth. To kill with sword, with famine, we already saw the sword, with famine, now the black horse, and with pestilence, and by wild beasts of the earth. Now, so these things are adding up. They're adding up. They're coming together. All of these horses. And then we see the last one right here. Let's look at that one. Right there. Okay. What's this last horse? Well, it's sickly. And if you look, it looks like it's uh, just uh, sickness is, and the, the skeleton on it on top is because of the death and dying that is taking place. All right. And I used a little bit of uh, imagination here to put that in because death and Hades. And usually death is represented by a skeleton. But you notice he's touching the end of the sword because a lot of people are being killed by the sword, but also pestilence. That means sicknesses, diseases, plagues are on the earth. And Hades is behind because Hades is a word that means people they go to uh, they pass away all it means is they they pass away and that's Haiti so people are passing away but now if you notice real carefully and a lot of people miss this it's also mentions that the animals of the world start attacking people all right and we'll see that there's a cougar and there's a bear and you're gonna see more and more this type of thing and so as uh, this is the order the way they go uh, first on the white horse and then the red horse and then the black horse and then the dapple horse or the sickly looking horse and that is to represent the times of the tribulation the first part of the tribulation uh, there's seven years all together and so uh, this is what uh, takes place there. The uh, now, as uh, you can see, the picture behind me because it's in the wrong order from behind. So just keep that in mind. But then, as we go on, we see what else is taking place. And by the way, uh, there's a lot of animals today, even attacking people more so than usual sharks and bears and on and on it goes uh, wild animals attacking people uh, more so than usual and, J and God said in the Old Testament that that's what would happen if people got away from him and of course the world is uh, very much away from the Lord and it says and they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and so on when uh, he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they bore. They cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Now, you need to realize that the rapture of the church has already taken place. Uh, we, those that are alive today that are Christians, uh, are taken home to be with the Lord. 
And uh, we talked about that before in detail and looked at the different scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 18. First uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. The rapture of the church has taken place and uh, other places in scripture. Jesus talked about it. Uh, also Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, God is coming back for his church, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle, washed in the word, the word of God. That's what is happening right now. There will be revivals and they will be emphasizing what we're doing, reading through and studying the Bible. Like uh, it says in Revelation, to read out loud the word of God to the people. But in when the rapture takes place, and Jesus said that also that Speaking of his church, he says that uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, they're going to keep fighting against the church. But the church is going out glorious with uh, garments of white. And uh, there be pure, uh, born-again Christians that love the Lord with all their heart. Now, uh, but on the earth, there are those that still receive the Lord. But it goes back to, and some people say, well, the Holy Spirit won't be here. And a sense the Holy Spirit's influence is being taken out because of the church and the Holy Spirit in the church. We are the salt and light of the world. All right. And by the way, in the rapture, this is something that someone reminded me about in one of the comments. And I appreciate your comments and questions. And about one of the comments was that, in the rapture, uh, we believe that those, let's say there's a husband that's married and he's uh, saved, but the wife isn't. Uh, the, or it could be the other way around, the wife is saved and the husband isn't. But they have a little baby uh, or a child before the age of accountability, which is different for every individual. But they will go with the believer when the church is raptured out and they will be found uh, missing uh, because they went with the believer. The believer uh, has been sanctified. They have a sanctifying element in the family and scripture talks about this. We could look at this in other detail, other details like this about the rapture another time. But and so they will go with the believing uh, individual in the family. And that's important to understand as well. So all of these have been caught away to heaven. But on earth, the Holy Spirit is not in the church because he has been taken out. Uh, think about the millions of Christians. In fact, uh, uh, there's over a, uh, a billion they uh, claim to be Christians. And even as many as two billions in the, in the world today. But, of course, not all those are born again. But the born-again Christians uh, that are truly saved and in the universal church, which is the, the Christ spiritual church, not the, the, the organized church. But anyway, so those are taken away in the rapture of the church. But left behind are those who are not saved. But during this time, many, many will be, people will be saved. Now, I believe personally that those that had a clear presentation of the gospel and rejected uh, the message uh, over and over again, their hearts are going to be hardened. And there's a scripture that talks about that, Thessalonians and so on. But those that did not have a clear presentation of the gospel, but... Maybe they did, but at that point, it's, uh, somebody says that, or they've seen in the average, it takes seven presentations of the gospel for a person to really, uh, on the average, uh, to receive the Lord. But there's many that have not heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so they are saved during that time, but they cannot buy or sell. Uh, and we'll talk about that a bit. Uh, unless they have the mark, and they don't want to take the mark. And so they're running and trying to hide, and it's very hard to hide with uh, technology the way it is. 
And so when they're found, they're going to be beheaded. Now, the scripture talks about that. And so they're in heaven, but they're actually part of the tribulation time, Jacob's trouble. And, and Daniel talks about how that there is, and we'll look at that, Daniel chapter 9. We'll look at that on another occasion, what takes place uh, during that time. But here is uh, what is happening at the beginning, the first three years of the tribulation, three and a half years. And that is talked about in several places. And uh, Jesus spoke of it also, the Antichrist, what he would do, and so on. So then we come to uh, the sixth seal then. Um, when he opened the sixth seal, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth. All right, remember when Jesus died on the cross, there was three hours, there was no light on the earth. Well, God was, the Father could look at his son as he took the sin of all the world upon himself. And so there was darkness then, but this is going to be darkness uh, for punishment of the world that does not believe. The, and what they've done with creation. The full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. Even the whole world, Paul says in Romans, that is suffering and groaning and pain because sin came into the world. And so the creation of even the stars and planets and outer space is uh, suffering and uh, decaying and wearing out and running down. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up. In the Old Testament, it talks about that. God will roll up the what he created on the first day, the outer space, and he's going to roll it up like a scroll remember and uh, at the beginning of that and then as uh, time goes along remember god is going to burn up the heavens and the earth with a fervent heat and then he's going to recreate it but this is the beginning and it's starting to fall apart and every mountain and island was removed from its place then the kings of the earth and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and every one slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Now, this is very important that you understand this. That these people, there is, the gospel is going out into all the world during this time. And we're going to see how there's 144 thousand milligrams or Pauls, whichever you want to think of. Can you imagine? Uh, the power, and they can't be killed during that time. We'll look at that in just a bit. That's next chapter in chapter 7. But uh, they're witnessing. You have the two witnesses in Israel. They can't be killed until they're allowed to be killed, and then they'll be killed and they'll rise again uh, after three days. And then you have angels, at least three angels, maybe more, but we're told about three angels that fly around the whole earth telling people, don't take the mark of the beast. If you do, you'll be, you'll perish, but to worship him who created the heavens and the earth and, uh, and so on. And so uh, there's opportunities to receive the Lord, but look at what they're doing. These people, they would rather, because they don't want to worship God, uh, just like a third of the angels fell with Satan, uh, and they cannot be redeemed. These people are like that. They 
do not want to worship the Creator, Creator God. Instead, they would rather to commit suicide. They want the mountains to fall on them from uh, so they can be covered from the face of God. Well, that's just going to send them to hell. Uh, and so that is the way it is on the earth in some places even right now before this takes place. People are hardening their hearts to the Lord. In the United States, we have many churches. We have the gospel on its freedom to get the gospel out on television and uh, social media and newspapers and radios and on and on it goes. Uh, freedom to share the gospel by and large. Now there are more people are being starting to be arrested for doing this thing publicly and so on, especially when they have the gay pride parades and so on. Uh, but the thing is, uh, if you speak out then or read the Word of God, of course, uh, there are people being fined and put in jail and so on. But by and large, there's freedom. But you know what? Many people are harding, hardening their heart to the gospel. And in other places, there's being revival taking place. But during this time, they want to die rather than to worship the Creator God. They would rather the mountains fall on them, avalanche, than to receive Christ as their own personal Savior. And so uh, we didn't talk about it much, but uh, we talked about the churches a little bit. And I believe there will be churches still going on that are they're not worshiping God. Uh, they have joined with the united right now we're seeing and this is talked about in scripture uh and uh, babylon 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 uh and that's since chapter 17 and 18 and there but the religious babylon which is all the r religions of the world will unite on uh, worship of this uh, false christ and uh, they will have one world religion. And we'll talk about as we go along, there will be uh, one world finances or money and uh, one world government and all aimed at worshiping this man who calls himself the Messiah, but he's a false Messiah. And people will take his mark and worship him, but not the God of the universe. And you know what? Uh, you have time right now. Maybe as you're watching this and you don't know Christ as your own personal Savior, right now you could receive him. I want to give every opportunity possible for you to get saved and you don't have to face and be left behind and, uh, and then suffer judgment of the world and of God eternally separated from him. No, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why uh, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. All right. Right now, just turn to the Lord. Ask him to forgive you for your sins. Ask him to save you, and he will. Those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Our time is more than up, so we're going to have to close right now. But I'm praying for you that you will receive Jesus as your Savior. Let's pray right now. Father, we just commit this time into your hands that we've had together. We pray that you will cause fruit to come from your word as you wash us in your word day by day. And also... The Lord, you will bring fruit, spiritual fruit in our lives, and souls, many souls will be saved. We pray all these things, Father, with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the Lord bless you, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow.